One of the things that hadn't helped the world coming together to address this issue was the enormous and well-funded disinformation campaign that has occurred over recent months. It started with uh, a criminal act, the hacking of uh, East Anglia University's email system and the extraction of enormous number of private emails which were then sifted through by Russian hackers who were paid from elsewhere um, to, to try to find something that looked like incriminating information. In the week before the Copenhagen meeting, uh, some supposedly incriminating emails were released. In the weeks before the meeting, some supposedly incriminating emails were released, which cast great doubt on the, the credibility of climate science. Um, since then, incidentally, a commission or commissions have found that no wrongdoing was in fact done. This was simply uh, uh, a malicious attempt to destroy the credibility of climate science. Sure, the commissions found that things like the IPCC uh, could improve their act, could actually work better, but that is true of any organisation you want. And I, I don't think that's either here nor there. Following the East Anglia email hacking, um, a, a bombshell was dropped in January. And that bombshell concerned uh, the rate of melt of Himalayan glaciers as projected by the IPCC. Now, I'm on the board of WWF International, and I know that the error ar arose with WWF, the actual figures are that the, the Himalayan glaciers will melt away by 2,350, as I understand it. That's what the projections are. Um, what was published in, uh, by WWF and the IPCC was that they'd be gone by 2035. So it's an error which has crept into the stuff. In a 3,000-page report, a single error of that kind is not a bad hit rate. But this was, again, projected widely in the media as casting doubt on all climate science. Yeah? Following that there was an attempt to really put the stinger on by saying that, in fact, the IPCC's got uh, something wrong in Europe, that they uh, have mis miscalculated or misquoted the amount of the Netherlands that are vulnerable to high sea level rise, uh, to, to, to high sea level surges. Um, it turned out that that information was provided by the Dutch government itself to the IPCC, so there was no doubt uh, there. But the campaign was very much like the sort of media campaign that I'm used to when people try to discredit me. And the way that works is usually on a Friday they'll run a front page story saying what a rat bag I am, you know, front page. And people go, well, no, that's all right, interesting, someone's being a bit, you know, a bit corrupt or a bit rotten. And then on the Saturday they'll run a page three story, usually a much longer story, listing everything you're supposed to have done and all the reasons why you're a rat bag. And then on the Monday they'll put a little stinger in, a little reminder, just to remind people what a bloody, what a rotten person you are, you know. And that's very much like this campaign, you know. You, you have the release while the world's looking, just before Copenhagen, announce your story. Then in January, while people have got a bit of time to absorb it all, you put in a bit more of the detail, stuff about the Himalayan glaciers, and then the little stinger, just to remind them that the IPCC is not to be trusted. It was a very carefully crafted and political campaign, and we see the result of it now with Peabody Coal in the United States using exactly that information as the basis of a court case to take the US EPA to court contesting their right to regulate CO2 as a pollutant. So we now see the full picture. It's gone full circle. This is very much a political campaign. It, there, is, there is no serious impact, in my view, on the, on the credibility of climate science, um, but it has had big political consequences particularly as it was unleashed at a time when the world was trying to come together to address this problem.